Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another Spirit Review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the two latest releases uh, from Compass Box and John Glazier, that being Enlightenment and The Circus. Now, both of these are brand new to the U.S. market, and I'm talking today is June 1st, 2016. It is the official release for both of these. So you can start looking for them on your shelves now. Now, the thing to note about Enlightenment is that there is more of it to go around, even though it is limited edition, uh, because there is 5,922 of these. Bottled at 46%, uh, retailing right around $100 for it. To whereas the Circus is going to be a little harder because there was only 2,490 bottles to go around, retailing roughly around 250 hopefully within the 250 closer to that than the $300 range. Uh, it is bottled at 49% and it does contain much older whiskey. Um, when they, uh, John Glazier, of course, got into a little trouble last year with this is not a luxury whiskey, this one right here that I reviewed last year. And he got in trouble because he gave out all the information there was on it, exactly what malts went into it, how old they were. He did the same thing for last year's the 2015 Flaming Heart and the EU regulations don't, they forbid that. They don't want the distilleries talking about the age of every whiskey that goes into their blends. Uh, so they only allow them to talk about the youngest. Okay, so you know, he's been fighting that fight and trying to get them to change that law because he feels like every distillery should have the right to tell the consumers what's in the blend. Um, they don't, they shouldn't have to, it shouldn't be mandatory, but they should have the right. So that's kind of why he came out with enlightenment um, because it talks on the back how they're fighting, you know, again, fighting the fight. And in the meantime, they wanted to give us a great whiskey with as much information as they possibly could. So that information being that Enlightenment is 48%, and I'm going roughly, it's like 48.2%, Young Klein Leash, uh, let's see, 37% Glenn Talkers, 11% uh, Bob Blair, and 4% Mortlock. Now, every one of those is ex-bourbon barrel matured, except for the Mortlock, and it is actually a rejuvenated ex-bourbon barrel. So that's where they scrape it, rechar it, and put the Mortlock in. And as you can tell by that color, Never mind that Phil Level actually shared this bottle with a friend of mine. Uh, but it is purely ex-bourbon barrel matured whiskeys. Now, the Circus, on the other hand, a big sherry component. And what they told us about it was they found a parcel, a big refill sherry butt, that was full of blended malt whiskey. Now, they weren't sure of the provenance or where the distilleries, uh, which distilleries went into the barrel. Uh, but they tasted it, and it was... A very mature whiskey, old whiskey, and they really liked it. So they wanted to use it, 57% of that, in this blend. And then they used 26% of a single grain, blended single grain whiskey. So they found another parcel of marrying single grains and used 26% of it in there. And then they used 11% uh, Ben Rennes and 2% of another um, blended malt from a refill sherry. All right, so heavy on the old whiskey here and not so much here, but retail price 100 again, 250. So let's go ahead and get to the nosing on Enlightenment. Wow, it pops. It pops with vanilla and green apples. Little lemon peel, a little cinnamon, a little clove in this one. Almost a touch of heather or like a, a grassy element coming through. And as far as the fruits, I get the, a lot of that green apple. There is a little bit of a, a hint of like a red licorice underneath as well, or maybe like a ribbon candy under that. So it does have a sweet and a, a fruit, you know, green fruit. Uh, forward element to it on the nose. Let's see. Do we want to nose side by side? Well, we better not. We better just go ahead and taste it and do its notes first. So 46% enlightenment. Mm. 46% really nice mouthfeel. Good medium viscosity. That young Kleinleash really coming through. 
Oh wow, transitions. Um, let me try that one more time. So it has, as it enters and it goes down, it's very creamy. Vanilla, lemon peels, um, those green apples, uh, they're in there, but they're a little more subdued now because there's a big malt component to it. That's that Klein leash. And then right there at the mid palate, you start getting a cinnamon warmth and it does not get big. It actually stays about a good medium level. At the same time, you start laying on top some leather component. Um, let me see, is that... Yeah, so it's vanilla, and then you start laying on kind of like new leather, actually. And then on the back end, you start getting a little tobacco, tobacco leaf. And that's on the very back. And almost a little hint of a uh, dark chocolate or a bitter, you know, cocoa on the back end. Overall, very, very nice. I love the way that malt transitions. For the $100, I actually think that's a really good buy and a really good blend from them. Mm. Good long finish. Warming finish. Mm. Okay. On to the circus. On the nose, and as you can tell by that color, very, very dark. Not quite the general dark, but close. nice so on the nose of this one it's much different than that um, definitely sherry forward so you're getting a lot of the cranberries raspberries dried cherries all these dried red fruits a little cinnamon in here almost a sprinkling of nutmeg on top of that some there's a little bit of a roasted nut character. Almost almonds, maybe maybe a touch of like a hazelnut as well. A little bit of a There is a little bit of a citrusy oil aspect to the nose. Overall pretty nice, really really nice. It smells Smells like a really nice single malt is actually what it smells like. All right. Mm. Wow. That's oily. That's mouth coating. 49%. I'm still waiting on it. It's, wow, it's not nearly as bold as this guy. This is more refined whiskey here. It doesn't get that real cinnamon warmth and, and that good swell in the middle and that really long lasting uh, warming finish that this one has. Man, this one is just so round and broad and stretched out um, as far as how the sherry just goes on and on. Let's go ahead and try that one more time real quick so I can get to the notes. And it is, it's just all those dried fruits, very soft, coating the mouth. It is a little bit of like an orange oil in there as well. Caramel. There is a little bit of a roasted nuttiness to this one um, on the palate as well. Uh, kind of comes in around the mid palate with a little bit of cinnamon and and that sprinkling of nutmeg and then as it kind of crests over you start feeling the the old oat but the thing that amazed me was how upfront when you get all this rich sherry from the single malt component and then you get this really nice single grain old single grain character uh, that kind of feels like caramel or a, a really nice sweetness underneath everything so you kind of get that sherry up front with the dried fruits and it's Oloroso sherry so you're not getting a really ton of sweetness here but that single grain laying underneath it is providing that sweetness that caramel aspect kind of driving throughout wow it's amazing 
how it just rolls over in those two single grain components and the single malt components just are blended seamlessly. Uh, on the back end, you are starting to get old leather, old, uh, some oak resin on the back end. But it's not too tannic. It's not too bitter or drying. Really, really great whiskey, in my opinion. Not quite, again, as good as the General. Uh, but that was, a, an, again, another very, very rare find for them. As this one is, I think John Glazer did a great job with both of these. Um, I'm proud to have them both in my collection. I think you would be as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.